Welcome back all my new subscribers, old subscribers, and everybody in between. Today we're going to talk about, about what I use in a power outage situation when it comes to the heat in the middle of winter when it's cold. Last video I did was touch base about what I use in a power outage, which is one of these. I, I talked about this. This is a kerosene oil liner that some people call it. They have this stuff called called oil fuel that for the some um, hurricane lanterns. These are called a hurricane lantern. You can burn K1 kerosene in these. That's what I put in this. I just gotta let the wick, they call it saturate, let the wick soak up some of the kerosene so it will burn slower and not burn up your wick. Usually overnight I fill it up. What I recommend doing is if you use one of these and here's the um extra wick that it came with. If you use one of these, just let the the wick soak up overnight. This is what the wick looks like when it's never been used. Let it soak up overnight before exploiting it. And, and do this ahead of time so when that power outage is and this is your own money source, you ain't burning up a wick fast. Let it soak up overnight, the kerosene or whatever. Well, but yeah, I touched base about what I kind of use in a power outage, which I talked about the delay lights and all that stuff. And and so I'm going to talk about what I use for a heating source in the winter. This is a kerosene heater. This is a gas heater that uses K K1 kerosene. Kerosene. And here's the what it and, and what it uses. As you can see right there, kerosene. I don't know if I got that right in the camera, but I have no I have no um cameraman, so I'm doing this all by myself. But this is a kerosene, what they call a kerosene heater. I bought that tractor supply. It's the Redstone brand. I haven't had to use it much, you know, I just messed around with it, heating it up, but it but what this is 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 a heater. It's like those propane Mr. Buddy heaters. The only difference is right here you fill it up with K1 kerosene and you can heat and it produces heat. These are the ones that you recommend. They also, I don't know if you can see it, but behind me I also have a what they call a radiant kerosene. But these are more recommended for indoor use. You can use that one too, both of them. But these are what they recommend in kerosene heaters because they're radiant and they're round. And you can, and they fan out the heat, kind of. These you want to use, and you still even, you want to use these in a good ventilated room, is what you want to do. And I would not, I wouldn't recommend using these kind of heaters in like a small combined place, unless you got some pretty good ventilation still. K, the, and the reason why they recommend the K1 kerosene, because K1 is an odorless, kerosene and what you want it and that's what you want to use because the old style kerosene mm, the old style would um have a really odor to it, a smell and the reason why they used to add a smell to it so you can tell which is which so you don't make the mistake of accidentally putting kerosene fuel in something that's supposed to be diesel or um or gasoline you know kerosene as I Another type of fuel mainly used for heating and stuff. But right here is a real old kerosene style jug. This is probably what's back, made back in the 80s, 90s. It's something my dad had. I'm familiar a lot with kerosene heaters because when I was a kid, I lived out in the country. In the winter, we'd always have a power outage and like that one, but an older one, my dad would use a radiant kerosene heater to heat the home with. This is a new style round indoor. These are my dad had recommended when he was alive still. He recommended me getting one of these kind for heating because they're more better the way they're designed and they shoot out heat from all around. And what I would recommend if you get one of these to um put it in like a big room where there, where you know there's not gonna be anything flammable nearby like papers or you know, put it kind of right in the middle of a room, usually what you want to do so that you won't spread out. You know, I have a pretty good sized hard floor 
dining room, so I'm gonna, if in the winter time, if I needed to use this for a, for my backup heat, if the power went out and I couldn't use my natural gas furnace, because my natural gas furnace runs on electricity, this one, and then I would use this, because this is my backup heating source, I would use this, and then I would set it up in my dining room in the middle, and use it to heat the, heat the room so I could stay warm and not die of hypothermia or something. But these, kerosene heaters, of course I don't have batteries right now, and it, but on the back of this, as you can hear that clicking, that's me hitting the door, the battery door, but this has a, what they call electronic ignite, where you can um, ignite it electronically, or you can do this here, use matches, you want to use pretty long matches. I'm using some smaller diamond, oh, cheap ones. These work just good too, you know. And one thing you want to always remember what's kerosene here's they run on a wick. This is the wick. These are my extra wicks for when the wick inside here burns up, you know. And that's the only downfall versus propane, like little Mr. Buddy heaters, you know, Mr. Heaters. Bones, you can just hook up propane bottle, you don't gotta mess with a wick. Kerosene, on the other hand, you do gotta have a wick. There's a wick inside there. And what you do is, when the wick burns up, you replace this. And like you do with the oil lanterns, you install your new wick. You, you let the um, kerosene soak up to the new wick so you don't burn up the new wick fast. You know, you let what they call saturate, let it soak up. Some kerosene let it set overnight and start playing. Now I'll show you how you start this. And that's when you lift that up right there. But you turn this knob. This right here is the manual shut off. And when you're done using this at night or whatever the case may be, you just go like that. You just hit that button and it shuts it off and and the flame will go out. Now, with even with K1 kerosene, you are going to run into kind of an odor from start starting it up and shutting it down. I still recommend using it in a big, well-ventilated room. These are safe to use. You know, this is redstone kerosene. It's been around for hundreds of years. Safe, and I'll show you how you like this. You simply just strike your match. That's if I can get these cheap matches to work. <laughs> and then you go inside there, like so. And then what you want to do is take your little cone. The kerosene inside this tank is kind of old. Well, that's how you light it manually. And then you want to adjust your, your flame. You want to adjust your flame and it should be a nice flame. It takes a while and then it will eventually heat up. As you can see right here, it will eventually heat up and you'll start feeling like right now I can feel it already up at one. And that's why they have a cage on this to kind of help you from touching this part right here where my finger is. Because <laughs> it will burn you. And then what you do is on the inside here they have this little cone and you slide that back and forth. And that cone will start to glow orange. And once it starts to glow orange, it will get hotter and the more heat you will produce on your kerosene heater. And then what you want to do is, this big old knob here is your high and low in your temperature. But you to adjust your knob. This is what you use to adjust the wick. The wick inside is being adjusted. Did. So you have a lower to higher setting. Right, right now I got it on max. So if I adjust it down lower, it will eventually restart, will produce heat. And so, so the more heat you want, the higher up the wick goes, the less heat you want, want the lower the wick, the less heat you're going to get. And then you produce it. And now, now that it's glowing, this little window will show you how it's glowing and smoke. And you can tell... There's a lot more better videos out there explaining about how to properly run kerosene here, but 
this is just, I'm just a basic joke while showing you what I know. But yeah, if you see a lot of smoke and stuff, that means your wick might be kind of dusty, dirty, and you want to clean it off beforehand. Because you want to have your wick clean and burning. And when the wick, like right now it's producing a lot of heat. So you want to adjust it down. I got it at the highest setting right now. I'm going to put it down at low, at the lowest setting. And then when you spin this cone around, this is causing, this cone will heat up to help produce more heat. And then when you're done using your heater and you don't want to have a flame on it, normally hit this button and boom, it goes out. Now the way I lit this, I use matches, but it also has a um, electronic igniter where you would press this in. And this would it electronically ignite the kerosene via batteries. I think if I remember right, take C size batteries and you would have, it would automatically light. And if you don't have batteries, you just simply, again, let me show you. You take out a match. You know, longer matches would be a lot more nicer. I'm just using the standard old, what you find in the, kitchen section of your store you know and go like this make sure you're you know, I believe didn't put my but you wake up to the highest setting then you want to take your you want to take yeah I broke that match you want to take your your matches strike one then you want to lift up inside there. And then you'll turn it on. And then you want to shake this to kind of help get that wick all the way around. Because what will happen is that wick will slowly start to, to spin around like a big giant circle. And you'll have kerosene. You'll have heat. And as you're spinning this around... This little cone will get warm and will start to glow orange and that means you're starting to produce heat. But right now I can feel heat, but over time it'll eventually get the cone will get oranger and oranger and glow an orange glow and it will be more hot. And then like I said before, when you're done using the heater and you want to shut it off, you hit it where it says manual shut off. And so one thing I will always recommend with any heater, whether it's propane, natural gas, any sort of heater, read the instruction manual. I know us men, the manual, what's that? <laughs> we don't, men don't like to read the instruction, but it's very important to read the instruction manual so you understand what you're doing. And that's another thing this has is a handle so you can carry it around from room to room or wherever, you know. I'm one of those people, what I would recommend doing, if you use one of these, make sure to um, let it cool down before you start moving it all over the place. You know, let it cool down and grab it. It's good to have a handle. I personally like these because I'm familiar with kerosene heaters. Again, when I was a kid living out in the country in the middle of winter, this is what kind of heater I, we used as a backup heating source in an emergency winter situation. One year back in the 90s, uh, these, these in the middle 90s, um, later 90s to early 2000s, I had, a, we had a really bad ice storm that knocked out power for like two whole weeks and we had to resort to a kerosene heater about like that one in the back there, a radiant one, it was an older model, a different one, which is no longer made, the one my dad had, it got too old so I scrapped it out. But yeah, I, I like kerosene. I would recommend one of these for a good backup heating source if you don't have one. Now, if you got a wood stove in your house, that's a great one. That's something I plan on down the line getting for my house is a wood stove. But if you can't afford a wood stove, get one of these. You can get them for about around 100, 150, 123, something like that. Around, a little bit under $200. And I would highly recommend one of these. For case of a power outage situation, 
if you ain't got a backup heating source. And then, but if you have one of those little mystery heaters, propane heaters, there's right going with that. But see, the thing, the thing is, I like about kerosene versus propane is kerosene is is a is a gas type fuel that will not explode. It will catch fire it'll ignite pretty fast, but it won't do like propane or gasoline where it will whoosh, where it will poof in your face. And I feel. I've always felt like kerosene heaters to me were more safer to use versus propane. I was always afraid of little, little gas heaters, you know, exploding or something happening, you know. That's why I decided when I made the decision, okay, what kind of heating source do I want to use in case of emergency power outage situation in the middle of winter since I can't afford a wood stove at the time. At this current time, I decided to go with a kerosene heater instead. But I would, but I'd recommend a, a wood stove if you can afford it. Go with a wood stove because that, to me, a wood stove is going to be a lot more safer. And then here is the this little oil lantern. I'll quick show you how to light up this oil lantern here. You left this little trapper right here. You left this up like I just did. Yeah, take your thumb, go like that. Now I haven't um and like I said before, let this um set overnight or so with um to and let the wick soak up some of the fuel. And this is again kerosene. You can use this right here, blue jug of kerosene to um heat this up. I also would which one of these recommend using K1 kerosene, but I'll quick show you here. Well, that's what you do, and then if you want a dimmer, this will give you dim, this will give you super bright, you know, this little knob here is what you use to adjust your, your wick and your temperatures and all that. I'm going to blow it out since I, and then when you're done, just blow it out. This one just has a manual hidden. And these, you have to be careful because they do produce heat too. So you want to be careful if you're around anything flammable, both of these. So like with any heater, anything gas, always use common sense. I know that ain't common much, but use your head. Be smart. Don't, don't be stupid. But so I'm going to end this video. Hope you like it. Like, subscribe, favorite. You know, like it, subscribe if you want to see more. I'm just kind of doing a little bit of videos of seeing what people like and dislike and just seeing what what's good and what's not, you know. Again, this is just a video of me discussing what I use in an emergency situation when a power is out and in the middle of winter. But one thing to remember, remember when you get one of these heaters, Buy extra wicks, so when your wick burns up, you'll be able to have wicks on hand to change the wick out and stuff. Because again, these run on wicks, so. And I hope you all have a good day. And thanks for watching.